Welcome back to Seek of Strength and welcome back to the Seek of News show at 6 ish somewhere, brought to you by Seek of Sleep. This is our Seek of Sleep supplement designed to help you get better sleep and stay asleep for longer. Why does it help you sleep? Because it contains some of the most important micronutrients you need in your diet to get to sleep. Now, on with the new show, we're going to come in hard, come in fast with a 120 kilo strict press from Kyle Shulman from the US of A. Now, the reason this 120 kilo strict press compared to other 120 kilo strict presses, which are pretty rare as it is, uh, is Kyle ran the Seeker Strict Press program, which is mind blowing, has to be the biggest press on the Strict Press program so far, unless someone knows of a bigger one. He also benched 405 pounds after a. I think, pulse. Kyle, is, I think Kyle is a strong dude. I think Kyle might have a strong press. Yeah. That's all. That's all I'll say. Yeah, it's fairly safe to say that, yeah. Strict, strict press as well. Yeah. No bullshit. I like the bench as well. Nice, fast, and aggressive. That's just like your bench. Yeah. He's got really long arms like you as well. Yeah. Um, so he it's just, uh, doesn't have a 57 kilo strict press like me. No. That's You don't even have 57 kilos. Now, speaking of someone else who has actually 121 kilo strict press, Toshiki. So Toshiki is doing some snatching again. So we know Toshiki's been through the wars. He's had uh, injuries coming back after the Olympics. Now he's doing bodybuilding. And he's snatching 50 kilos here in his slippers. Uh, so I assume he's maybe maybe making a little for a way back into weightlifting. We can only hope. Uh, he's looking more jacked than ever, thankfully. Yeah. And just doing some high rep snatching. So obviously, I assume this is the first set of snatching, maybe in a long while. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see the man, the myth, the legend in just over two weeks' time. Tashiki looks so jacked that he looks like he lives his life in a full Instagram filter all the time. I think Tashiki is a diligent athlete. He looks like he lives in overhead lighting. He actually does. Maybe yeah. Japan is only overhead lighting. Um, maybe very, you have abs in Japan. Maybe. Very crisp, as always, from Tashiki. Like the fried chicken I'm going to eat in Japan as much as possible. And sushi. You know, Tokyo has more Michelin stars, I think, than Paris. No way. Yeah, currently. Uh, Crazy. So, Big in their tires. So, actually, I'm not even going to do any training in Tokyo. I'm just going to eat so much food. It's actually, the channel's going to turn into fridge versus food. Fe- yeah. Featuring Dara. Yeah, featuring fits. Just eating the same amounts of food as much as possible. No training. I might do one set of squats. Yeah. Yeah, let's leave the training off and just go eating. People would like that, I feel like. Yeah. I'd watch that. Now, speaking of squats, we've Air Cali, the Georgian lifter. I'm not going to say his second name. Do you want to take a Lashley second name there? Oh, uh, yeah. One don't go. have contact lenses or glasses in. So okay, I'll try. Do uh, you want to spell it and I'll pronounce it? No, I'm going to do it. Check Edzi. Seven. So a 290 kilo squat and it is smashing. Beautiful squat. Lovely squat, yeah. Really nice high bar squat. And yeah. I know that sounds silly, but that's what I'll, that's like, he looks like he's done five of that. It's just an honest to God nice squat. And you, he definitely colour coordinated his outfit. Yeah, 100%. I appreciate lifters who do that. One thing you'll notice with this video is that it seems as though when Lasher trains in that training hall, he always trains on the same platform. Mm-hmm. And I really appreciate that. I think that it's the only appropriate thing to do. Because this shot of the training hall makes the training hall look around three times bigger than what I thought it was. No, that seems to be what I thought it was too, to be honest. Okay. That seems appropriate. Yeah. You know, on the vein of uh, training the same platform, have I told you about that? I think I've talked about this before, but I can't. I. It's tough for me to turn a barbell around. So if I come in training, the barbell is facing one way. You can't pick that barbell up and turn it and face the rack. Like you have to, the barbell can only travel in forward and back planes. You know that? No. That's that's why you can't suppress more than 57 kilos even making that mistake. Yep. Is that true? So my mind is true. What about when you bring it to a different gym? Why would I bring my bar to a different gym? So like when you brought it from the shed to the new shed? Oh, what, whatever orientation it assumes then it's fine. It's not, it's not for a lifetime. It's just session to session like. Okay. It's just wherever it starts in that session. Okay. You know? Look, your lifting will go up if you follow those rules. Now, <clears throat> Lee Sang is here, and I think Lee Sang is already one beast of the week for yeah, me, just 100%. because of his antics. So Lee is a 67 kilo weightlifter, back squat's 250. Now you'd think, oh, that's an amazing back squat, full depth, beautiful technique. As always, a consummate technician. Whips out, see straps, gets a little chalk. I love the fact that he's wearing the straps during the squat as well. Yeah, yeah, that's actually... You know, yeah, why did he go get chalk, and, but also have the straps <laughs> on? 
And then he deadlifts the 250 kilos with perfect technique and boat lifts. Incredible. It's so nice. I love how even at the top of the deadlift, he does the little shrug like yeah. he's doing the clean, you know? He, um, so d- this session, or this idea of you back squat until you can't back squat anymore and then drop the bar to the floor and you deadlift it. Mm-hmm. For me, most of my college years, this would have been a hangover session. Yeah. So you front squat until you can't front squat it. Mm-hmm. Then you just keep the bar in the rack and you do back squats until you can't back squat anymore. And then you drop the bar or fail a back squat and do a deadlift afterwards. That was also how I made pretty much all of my deadlift VBs for over <laughs> for four years at least. Maybe that's why I haven't made a deadlift VB in a while because I haven't been hungover. I will say one thing is that my back squat did not look like that, though. I feel like Lee has kind of maxed out his capabilities of back squatting at a 67 kilo lifter. I feel like it'd be very hard for him to get beyond that, maybe even 260 from where he is at the moment. He's packed a lot of muscle onto that 67 kilo frame, though. How do you feel when people compare us and he, like, oh, he destroyed power lifters and stuff like that? I'm not sure. No, no, no. no. I feel like you're just inviting negative discourse there for no need. Also, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It really like it's it's like people talking about super bikes on F one cars, you know. Mm-hmm. Like they're never ever in the same race. Like this is it's just complete. I hate it. Mm-hmm. I hate, that is inviting animosity is all you're doing there. Yeah, especially well, if the lifter brought it up himself, it's not as uh, it's a bit different. But when the comments say it's like it is just starting some because weightlifters want to be like yeah, and powerlifters want to be like uh no actually no uh, actually that's not true. Uh, IPF is drug tested. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so out of nowhere. I heard a great name. Someone said on the Lose Arjun video yesterday, and they called the valley. We call it the ass of where yeah. your your rectors, your back ass, your back ass. Someone called it a back bussy. <laughs> <laughs> a bussy. That's so good. No, that's that's not perfect. Staying. That's staying. It's stuck now. So Miso, <laughs> who we haven't seen kind of peak since he won gold uh, at the. Olympics in Tokyo where we're going in two weeks yeah he's back he's kind of peaked a little bit come back but he's gained some weight uh, he's, he was telling me he felt kind of slow as a heavier lifter he had a lot of knee issues but this is kind of the real run up to it now where it's meaningful like once you've hit that top of the gold at the, at the Olympics there's only one more thing yeah. to do is get another gold so we got him with these consummate miso hand cleans touch and go hand cleans these yeah like the heaving style very much is his complex I feel like Yes. I feel, and he deserves to have it. Uh, one thing as well is like Miso's obviously taken a lot of time off um, competing and maybe some time off training as well after winning the gold. Nobody in the world deserved it more than Miso to take that time off. I feel like as well, you can call your, you can get a complex named after you if you have won an Olympic medal. Yeah. Now, obviously, if the clock off complex and he only ever won silver at Olympics and actually they took those away from him there as you might know but uh, you just uh, you love to hate on Klockoff so like Klockoff gets a buy I suppose for calling that Klockoff complex uh, but Miso has his gold so he can call this the Miso complex I think now moving on to Arley Mendes who's working up here to 165 kilo snatch now, Arley hasn't been the same Arley since 2017, and this looks like 2017 Arley is yeah. back. We never really got any information on what the fuck was going on with Arley in the last couple of years, you know, at the Olympics. I think he bombed at the Olympics. Uh, some very poor performances leading up to that. In 2017, he was attempting world records in the clean yeah. and jerk and was cleaning them like a motherfucker. Nobody had, like, so... Training in person with Gabriel is that one of the loudest experiences you'll ever imagine. <laughs> and it's just like so, it's genuinely fatiguing because it's so aggressive. It's so impressive to watch. Mm-hmm. I feel like if you were to go and train in person with Early, it would be a very similar situation. I I wish he just didn't have that tiny bit of arm bend at the top yeah, of the snatch. Yeah. I, everything else is just amazing. Um, one other thing I think you should note from this video is that everybody out there you think that, like, oh, professional athletes have all their equipment in order. But it's great to see Early also uses an Alico clip to push his phone against while he's taking a video. <laughs> and that, no matter how good you are as an international weightlifter, mm-hmm. nobody remembers bringing a tripod to the gym. Or if you have one in the gym, someone breaks it. Yeah. You know, what's really interesting is, so, gracias Dios is, thank God. Right. Um, but in Irish... Bacus Ladia is like God be with you or whatever but it isn't interesting how the Spanish 
is Dios in, in uh, Irish. Dia. Yeah, Dia. yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Interesting. I wonder if it's coming from Latin, maybe. Is uh, is Dia, is the Latin word for God something starting with D-I or D-O or something like that? I have no idea. Now, you've seen this 280 front squad featured before, but so many of you tagged us in it, and Tushik, Tushiki, Tian Tao just put this up on his own Instagram. It's a 280 Speaking kilo front squad. Speaking about a bussy. <laughs> ah, it's sticking. <laughs> 280 kilo front squat as an 89 ah, kilo lifter maximum I would say 92 kilos unless he does a full illy alien and it's unfucking believable no, it's unbelievable that's yeah. incredible yeah. let's watch let's watch it again he looks thick doesn't he he looks fuck I feel like he this is the base building section yes you know yeah 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 the Chinese firewall is impossible to get into it's just such a nice squat mm -hmm. I am um, Look, I know it's 280, but I don't know how I feel about that 280 loading. I, I've i said this multiple times. I don't know how I feel about those Chinese squat block squat stands. Personally, I, I would... I do not like them. I would go red, 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 red. And then okay. maybe two and a half in collar. Maybe five. I'd probably do five in a spring clip. Mm. As a... Uh, as, uh, but not know. red, 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 blue, green? No, it's green, 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 I think. Oh, is it green, green, green? Yeah, it's three greens, so... I don't... Or is that two greens? No, it's three greens. So I just... I just don't know... Uh, I just don't know about that. Like, it's his loading. Like, he can do what he wants there. Yeah. You know. Maybe he doesn't load that bear, though. Maybe... This is the heaviest we've seen last year front squad as well. Put it in perspective. Yeah, it's insane. He's burying this. He's got the tiny hook grip... Yeah. 0.5 mil knee warmer sleeves. And uh, he's got a Velcro belt on. Uh, it's, it's actually... It's rawer than raw. If you could unrack 280, like you could just get the fathom of how heavy this must be for a front squat. It's insane. Go on, once more. Leave it there. Oh, there we go. Boof. Ah, oh, there it is. Now, here's another lifter who was all kind of fucked up at Tokyo Olympics and was set to smash some lifts is Yoheni Takensu. Tishkensu, Takensu, Yoheni Takensu. I feel like I got that right. He is so powerful, super jacked. We saw him qualifying for the Olympics from the Europeans. Uh, was doing massive lifting. Got the Olympics, lifted terribly, from what I remember, as a 96 kilo lifter. And now he seems to be back on that train mm. from the Cuban Grand Prix. This 212, I think, to beat Wes Kitts. I think Wes Kitts did... Uh, to 11 and this 212 I love the clean the yeah. power of that clean so he's a Belarusian lifter obviously lifting under the what do they call it the the international flag the or whatever the international flag yeah um, my big thing with this clean is that vertical extension and the pulling under mm -hmm. that that like turnover piece of this clean is just phenomenal I love how high his feet come off the ground mm -hmm. it's just a lovely clean Super aggressive knees out. So we've talked about this before as the, the Belarusians are want to do and how they teach their lifts. The thing with the Belarusians is that their lifters are so powerful they can dominate that lift without the knees coming back so aggressively. But the turnover, catch position, is holding the hook grip straight into the jerk. The power, everything about this is sickening. Like this looks so so sub-maximal. That's the jerk of a man with a 200 kilo push press. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, the, the thing with Yohani as well is we never see any training lifts from him uh, his Instagram used to be on private I don't think there's any training lifts up there if there's a full training lift I'd love to see it from Yohani especially when he's in the peak shape if you know what I mean but uh, I I think they're being smart with the the, the WADA watch list and staying uh, what's mum's the word I think is the, yeah. the phrase realistically unless you're in a country where you're really where you're responsible for your own funding and sponsorship is a thing you shouldn't be putting lifts on Instagram if you want to lift an international competition. Yes. I think that's safe to say. If you're like a Belarusian lifter or somebody who's in a state-sponsored weightlifting system, mm -hmm. you putting lifts on Instagram is not a good idea. Now, speaking of someone who just seems to be getting away from it, even though they must be on the watch list, is Lasha Talakatsi. And what I really liked about this video is that We've never really seen him do super heavy power snatches before. And when we have, they, they don't look great. But these power snatches at 170 up to 180 look phenomenal. Yeah. I really want to see a 200 kilo power snatch. 
the big thing I like watching in this video is the 180 actually looks slightly better than the 170 does. Mm -hmm. I feel like the 170 kind of slightly over pulls it. He jumps back a small bit. Mm -hmm. It's not as controlled. The 180 then is much more crisp. It's really, really nice. I'd like a 200 kilo power snatch would be something that would never get beaten, I would imagine. No. I don't even know if he can do it though. Like look at these, the 180, certainly a 190, but I don't know if we could get to he that 200. Being honest, he's not a massive amount above parallel with that 180. No, but he could be catching 120s that height all yeah, the way up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, might be unfeasible for the, the super height. Now, in other news, this is purely speculation, but there's something going on. So at a bare minimum, we've seen some stories and posts from the Kazakhstan lifters. You remember last week, Artem Antropov, we did a little live stream on Tuesday talking about tested positive for S23 or SARMs. And this probably means that Kazakhstan is going to get a four-year ban. But there's other rumors circulating. And just want to confirm that these are unfounded rumors and we've heard nothing official yet. Is that Nagarsa, Nagarsa Dilatoli is been banned as well. Also, I don't know if the, it's got lost in translation, though, if he actually got banned. I asked the younger 94 kilo lifter, I said, is Kazakhstan banned? And he said, yes. So they all, it hasn't happened officially yet, but everyone knows it's coming. Uh, so Kazakhstan are banned. So we'll see none of the Kazakhstan lifters for at least four years. Um, whether it'll actually be the four years, I don't know. Four years is obviously a devastatingly long time uh, for them to be banned for. Uh, and, you know, the, the reasons are there for whatever. But uh, as these particular lifters, as individuals, is obviously pretty... That's uh, gruesome. Pretty gruesome. It's unlike, will they get paid for the next four years? Will they still be able to lift? Will they have to come back? Will they go away? It's uh, all up in the air, obviously, for them. Now, I suppose that's the game you play. And there's a lot to talk about with state-sponsored doping and stuff, which we won't get into in this. But just to bring the news is that... Yes. We're not going to be seeing any Kazakhstan lifters at the Olympics by the looks of things, and they were building some of the strongest. Jeez, they had a great young crop of lifters coming through there. I didn't think they'd get it back after Ilya was gone, but they, yeah. Jesus Christ, they found them. Yeah, yeah. They went out into the steps there and they just grabbed them. Yeah. Having driven through a lot of Kazakhstan and met a lot of the youngsters and gone drinking with them, there was a. They're a solid group, great. A solid population. So welcoming. Yeah. Anyway, so look. You know our thoughts on, on most of this stuff, so it's a shame for not to see someone like Nergosa uh, lifting and Archim, of course, and all of the other longer lifters. But uh, be that as it may, that seems to be the situation as it is. Yeah. Now, next up, we've got our athlete section of the show. And this football player, I'm not sure what level he's playing as a collegiate, but he's doing hang full cleans in these Nike like Jordans. Like Jordans. Are they Jordans? Yeah. For a set of four. No knee sleeves, no belts, all hook grip. So fast under. The timing is incredible. A lot of arm bend, but I don't really care because his timing is outrageous. For a set of four. So 315 is 140 something yeah, 140 kilos. Yeah, 140 kilos usually, yeah. It's um, also around three inches out from the spotter bears at a certain point during that set. Brutal. Insane power. That's um, that is craziness. No real foot movement. No. Uh, very very deep and mobile catch position on the later reps. Very very impressive. Although on the first one he's a lot of foot movement. If you watch the first one again, I wonder is it just he's getting tired at that point of extension? He probably just doesn't have that. Most of us get tired after hand cleaning three fifteen for a few reps too. I suppose. Most of us could only imagine. <laughs> so if you just watch the first rep again, you'll see he gets a lot of air. Um, seeing. Yeah, a l bigger than ever cleans and hand cleans and stuff from the 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 American football side of things and athletics and it seems to be becoming even more not solidified but more in parts of the culture and it seems to be technique getting better yeah, in general. Definitely. I think there's more definite focused weightlifting coaching. Yeah, being done by a lot of S and C coaches, which is great to see. Obviously, in uh, in years gone by, it would have kind of been a select few coaches who would just have a passing interest or a personal interest themselves in it and then mm. they'd kind of bring it across. And then they'd write articles for like Muscle and Fitness or Teen Nation and, and talk about why the Olympic lifts aren't useful and write stuff about like single leg only training and stuff. Now, speaking of someone who I don't know if has ever been coached in the Olympic lifts, but Ryan Krauser is doing 120-ish kilos, I think these are pound plates, hang muscle snatches for repetitions and I just want to say the throwers are once again at it. This is the classic example of a thrower being at it. 
Drawers seem to really like hang muscle snatches, some of them. They're just the actual upper body strength of these are insane. Yeah. This as a shoulders and upper back exercise is insane. Whatever weight, like the positions are quite good. There might be, if you're talking in a classical sense about the snatch, probably a fair bit of overextension there. But these are just so strong. I love his shed gym. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you call that a pole barn in the US. Is that what that's called? Yeah. Of all throwers who are at it, Ryan Krauser is consistently one of the most at it throwers. He seems to be at it the most often. Yeah, very frequently. If you yeah. had a website monitoring when throwers are at it, like when you have the when are the Brits at it again, Ryan Krauser would feature frequently yeah. at throwers who are at it. And I think the big thing to remember when we're talking about throwers being at it, they're making fools of weight. Yeah. That's what they're doing. They're out there bullying weights. If you didn't let us know how competitive Ryan Krauser is, I'd be very interested. Oh, shot put world record holder. Never mind. Quite. 2016 and 20 <laughs> Olympic gold medalist and Olympic world record holder. <laughs> we are clueless about throwing. But we never say we are. We just here for CJS and C. Now, throwers again, a lot of you remember Joe Strong from Massachusetts, Rhode Island University. <laughs> His... 365 kilo for six. Now, Joe Hang Power Clean. You're going to get so much hate for saying that. Joe, I know it's not a roller. I don't even know where it is. Um, but the this matches his 6RM, which is hilarious that he has a 6RM Hang Power Clean. Yeah. And that it's at about 170 kilos, which is even funnier. Uh, Joe is just a horse. Like, yeah. The funny thing is, is like, he doesn't look crazy athletic. No. Particularly, like, wearing a yellow sweatband on your head definitely doesn't help with that. But he doesn't look like this crazy freak athlete like Ryan Krauser kind of does. Mm-hmm. But these numbers are crazy freak athlete numbers. Oh, it's Michigan State, Los Angeles. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, the uh, Joe is... I, I No, I don't, know, I don't think Joe's a world record holder, but Joe, I'd love to know how good Joe is at throwing as well. So, obviously, we appreciate the sport of throwing, but... Yeah. Uh, it's very hard for us to know how good anyone is unless they do have that Olympic gold medalist thing in there. What we particularly appreciate, rather than the sport itself, is the athlete's ability to peter over into other sports. Yeah. And uh, Well, that's what we're here for. Yeah. We're here to help 100%. some drawers. Help some drawers get this strong. Now, speaking of strong, you might, a lot of you might remember Ilya Shartsnev. And he was building up for a competition. I almost said gearing up for a competition. Jeez. And he squatted the 400 kilos, absolutely fucking buried it in wraps. It's not, that's not a single ply suit or anything like that. Uh, just in case you, you were wondering, because he's deadlifting and benching in that suit as well. So it looks to be just a very gentle singlet. And looking at the translation, it just says just in wraps. So pretty tight wraps, but holy fuck, lads. This, no, is, this is And as far as I'm aware, he's still 19 years old. This is insane. They're the mythical... He's one of those mythical Russian powerlifters that people yeah, used yeah. to talk about when Louis Simmons was uh, buying Russian weightlifting techs yeah. and trying to see how they train. Yeah, 400 kilos is just an insane number, but how that squat looked in itself is insane. Yeah. Like, if you're a normal gym goer squatting 200 kilos like that, that's very impressive. Mm-hmm. Not a mind say double that at 19 years old. Oh, it's ridiculous. Oh, my God. He One thing about this lift is it takes them ages to get it back in the monolift. The person running the monolift is watching the squat and doesn't put the legs back in. Yeah, do you know, when someone's squatting 400 kilos, that should be the lift that you're most paying attention to. Not be like... Yeah. You have one job, help him put it back in the rack. That's what the monolift is there for. Yeah. Now, speaking of powerlifters, and someone who's been around for a while who's not 19 is Dan Green. So Dan Green squatted 300 kilos for a set of five in his safety squat, uh, safety squat bar. Uh, Dan Green always very neat with his loading. You ever notice that? Yeah. Never any wasted loading, always on the ball with his metal plates and stuff. I used to be a massive fan of Dan Green back in the day, but he's kind of fallen out of the zeitgeist at the moment. Yeah. He's he's definitely not, or maybe it's just that the circles I'm revolving in at the moment don't have a massive amount of competitive powerlifters in him, but uh, he used to be big back in the day. Yeah, he was one of the the powerlifters, but there's so many people, I suppose, who are competing now who are big names yeah. and who are competing a lot, and I suppose, as crazy as it sounds to say, are, are stronger than Dan Green, uh, which is pretty fucking tough to do. Interesting fact about Dan Green. Yeah. 
good friend of mine went to a Dan Green seminar. He said it was amazing, very good seminar. Mm -hmm. Dan Green didn't eat for the whole day. Right. Because he said his only concentration was teaching and coaching people at the seminar. And then it was only after all of that was over he could go and eat. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Now, finish off the new show with this Lucas fellow we keep seeing from the Czech Republic squatting 320 by 5 on the back squat. Uh, high bar. It seems to be on a deadlift bar. A lot of people are wondering why it whips so much. Uh, but it does. Not that it matters. It makes no difference. Like It's it's still squatting. There's no range of motion benefits. The The other thing about this is he controls that whip very well. Yeah. like I think a lot of people, if the bar is oscillating that much, you'd see them kind of half shudder on the way back down as that initial whip of you sitting down uh, catches up with your squat but that's certainly not an issue here very controlled descent yeah I wonder why he chose to use the deadlift bar generally people squatting those heavy weights to be far less whip as the whip gets majorly aggressive it could be something as simple as that deadlift bar has more room on the outside for plate very lucky yeah you yeah. know such an interesting way of loading it so the, the bumpers 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 and then loads of those calibrated 20s uh, which is Getting 320 in the barbell is not easy as it is. No. So that's, uh, Having all those calibrated plates on the outside would make you believe that maybe he did want more whip. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. And now all the bumpers on the inside. Yeah. Incredibly impressive. Thanks for watching today's new show. Uh, a lot of impressive lifting. And thank you to everyone who tags us in the new show once again. So I know I say it every week, but we are majorly appreciative of it. And I look through every single one of those tags in between each new show. Uh, so I see each one of those. And thank you very much. Much of the new show is often made up of those tags. Uh, so we would appreciate if you keep it up as it lets us see lots of great lifting. As I say, we can't see all of it. And I and Lara are very appreciative of those tags. So appreciate it. Thank you, guys.